Be careful about what you put in your home. Be careful about what you allow in your home. There's a great verse here in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 26, that reminds us of this. The Bible says, Do not bring a detestable thing into your house, or you, like it, will be set apart for destruction. Utterly abhor it and detest it, for it is set apart for destruction. So we need to be very, very careful about what we allow into our homes as Christians, all right? There are lots of things in this world that are black and white, right? That we know are either either sin or is good and blessed by God. But then there are things that fall in that gray area, right? That are neither black nor white. And you got to use a little bit more judgment and faith to navigate through those types of things. And that's, I believe that it's quite obvious that life was set up that way on purpose because that's a big part of testing and challenging our faith is navigating through those gray waters to see which direction we're going to take. Are we going to err on the side of God or are we going to err on the side of sin? And, you know, our, our constantly staying in the Word of God, our prayer, our, our life that is dedicated to God, all of those types of things are what shape us and mold us into having stronger faith so that we can navigate those waters better and know exactly which side is good and which side is wrong. So there are things that we can bring into our home that we know for a fact shouldn't be there, Right. And I don't even have to name them. You already know what they are. You know what is sin and what's not if you know the Word of God. You need to know the Word of God. That's very, very important. And that's a big reason why I do these um, studies here, why I do these these videos here on Facebook, excuse me, on YouTube. I used to do them on Facebook a long time ago. I don't do them anymore. Now it's YouTube. But the reason why I do them on YouTube is for you to learn uh, more about your Bible. And for many of you, you already know about your Bible. And it's just, like me, it, it's just a reminder and reinforces what you already know, which is a good thing. It's not a bad thing, right? Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I seem to recall that somewhere. So our, our faith gets increased that way. So we know what, what things are sin and what things are not. And again, if you don't, well, then look it up and figure it out. But a big reminder for those that don't know that sin is basically just disobedience towards God. So are you disobeying God or are you obeying God? If you're obeying God, you're blessed. If you're disobeying God, disobeying God, then you are sinning. Simple as that. So those are easy enough to understand. But then what about that gray area? Um, about things that we should be putting in our life. We got to be very careful with those things. Um, and and look, I, I, I do believe that it's an individual thing, right? Um, for you, you may have things in your house, your home, that is not a problem for you, but if it were in my home, it would be a problem for me because of personal conviction. And I want to be careful with that word conviction, some, and I was once like this a long time ago as an early Christian and a part of a religious denomination that I was a part of back in the day and where I was educated in uh, seminary, Bible college, um, was they were very, they wore their convictions on their sleeve and they wanted everyone to know how spiritual they were and how convicted they were. And if you had more convictions, brother, then that means that you were more spiritual than everyone else. How everyone says, uh, you know, you act like you're holier than thou. Well, it was like that. And uh, we even knew that. We talked about that whenever I was a part of that group, uh, that denomination. But, um, you know, I don't know. Uh, we, I guess we just did it anyway. But uh, anyway, the Lord got a hold of me on that stuff, and and um, and and there's there's a difference between holier than thou uh, and preaching against sin, okay? Um, and the holier than thou people are the people who are really talking about more about what they do versus what's right. So like because I'm so good, I'm so holy. That's where the problem lies. It's not calling out sin. It's making yourself sound and look better than everyone else. That's truly the problem. But I don't want to get too far into that topic. That deserves its own video. Um, but let's stick to this about the uh, the things that we, we bring into our home. 
Uh, so you already know um, what the black and white things are. The gray areas are the things that you know we we get through based off of our knowledge, our uh, what we know of God, and our relationship with God, and things like that. And like I said, there are things that for you that may be a problem, and things for me that are not a problem, and vice versa, just because of how we uh, are built and things that just like certain sin that affect you that don't affect me or affect me and don't affect you. So those are the things that that we really need to keep a special eye on and and focus on to be sure that we are not we're not going to fall into something, all right? So I'll give you some examples and again, they may not fit you exactly, but this will give you something that you can work with. It could be a specific movie, right? You know that this movie has some material in it that's going to make you stumble, all right? And I don't even going to mention what type of material it is, whether it be something you see or something you hear. It just has some material in it that's going to make you stumble. And if you have an idea that that's going to make you stumble, get it out of your house. Don't let it come in to begin with, all right? If you know that's going to make you stumble, get it out, all right? It could be a movie. It could be things that, uh, you know, it could be music that you listen to. It could be a number of things. It could be things that are on your shelf. And those things that are on your shelf in your kitchen or dining room or your living room or wherever it is, those particular things that are on your shelf, they may cause you to stumble. If they don't cause you to stumble, hey, don't worry about it. I don't have any problem with that. Um... No worries there. I mean, that's that's between you and God. That's what mature Christians do, by the way. And again, I could talk about all of them individually, but it's really between you and God. Um, you know, I could tell you what the Bible says in, in particular about the idea of each one, and we'll do that in another video. Um, but you decide. Imagine that, being your own priest. Hmm. I seem to recall that somewhere in Scripture, <laughs> that we do have that personal connection and relationship with God. I'm a preacher. I'm a pastor. I'm not a priest, all right? I'm not your one that, that is uh, between you and God. I'm not that guy, all right? All we need is Christ for that. Christ is the bridge between you and God, not me, all right? What I do for my church, pastor, servant, all right? I serve them by giving them the Word of God, by preaching the Word of God. That's very, very important. And by being there for them for certain spiritual needs, right? So they have, they, they have concerns or issues that are going on. So my job is to, um, to help them with those and pray for them and things like that. But it's not that, you know, they have to have me so that they can get right with God. They can do that themselves. And you can too, all right? Um, the pastor helps and it's good to have a pastor, and it's biblical, or else I wouldn't be doing it. It's biblical to have a pastor, to have a church that where where all the stuff is going on. But uh, you know, is it something that you absolutely have to have in your Christian walk? No, you don't have to have a pastor. You don't have to go to church. But if you want to have a good life that's blessed by God and doing exactly what God wants you to have, then you will have those things. Again, I'll get into that stuff in detail another time. But I mean, that's biblical. Um, so you have that opportunity to decide what's right for you when it comes to what's in your house, all right? Um, but that is supposed to be your sanctuary, your house. That is supposed to be the, the, the place that is dedicated to your family and its growth. And if there's something there that impedes that, if there's something there that is going to be a problem, then you need to omit it. You need to remove it, all right? One more time. Do not bring a detestable thing into your house or you, like it, will be set apart for destruction. Utterly abhor and detest it for it is set apart for destruction. What is that thing for you? All right, from time to time, we let things in and, and then we recognize, hey, I shouldn't have done that. Then get it out. I'll, I'll give you one good example before we go. And this was for me. This was a personal example. There was a, um, I don't watch a lot of TV anymore. Any TV. I don't, we don't even have a TV. Ours is broken. <laughs> so I haven't, I haven't fixed it or not. Obviously I'm not going to fix it. But uh, 
I haven't replaced it. Uh, it sits uh, right here above our fireplace, and um, you know, I just, I just haven't, I haven't uh, replaced it yet because uh, I, I don't really care anything about it. Now, uh, my my wife watches um, shows on her phone and stuff like that, and my boys they have tablets where they watch certain things and stuff like that. I just I, I, I can't sit and watch shows long. Um, I get bored. Um, I feel like I need to be doing something else, so I don't really watch. But, 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 I have my own problems, by the way. I will get bogged down into YouTube or um, other platforms, and uh, next thing I know, I've wasted an hour, and I can't stand that. But I, I do the same thing, uh, but just in a different way. So, again, I'm not holier than anyone else because I'm not watching TV. But anyway, every now and again, I'll find a series that I want to watch, and... Um, um, should I say the name of it? Should I tell you the name of it? I think I am going to tell you the name of it. You ready? Stranger Things. All right. So my side gig, not gig, but uh, my side hobby is I like talking about and and, and uh, dealing with um, things that are outside the box and stuff like that, conspiracies and stuff like that. It's just a fun thing to hear how crazy things can how thoughts are and stuff like that. I like to do that. I like to see what, what people think. Um, and, you know, I disagree with like 98% of it. Um, but that said, uh, I wanted to see what the show was all about. So I went ahead and uh, took a look at it on, on Netflix. And uh, wow. Wow. Um Besides the, the 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 language, I mean, the language was obviously bad, and and I felt like okay, maybe maybe I can just tune it out, okay? I can tune out the language, and I'll be okay. Man, it got dark and demonic real fast, real fast. Now you know some things out there that are dealing with magical components and just fantasy. I don't have a problem with that. You, you, some in the comments be like, no, 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 you can't have any of that. Hey, that's the, whatever. Uh, we can argue that. Uh, I don't have a problem with imagination and fantasy and things like that. I, I think it's it's a okay to escape as long as you know that you know you're just imagining things, all right, and you understand that, like for kids and whatnot, or or to read a book that's about fantasy or watch a show that's about fantasy, and that's what I thought I was getting into, um, but. When that stuff is 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 really like demonic, then you better be careful. You better be very careful what you're inviting into your home, what you're inviting into your ears. All right, and you think that it's not affecting you, it's affecting you. All right. Um, so I I I've watched it. Uh, um, I don't know how far I got. Um, maybe two maybe three episodes, something like that, because I wanted to give it another shot, and it was on that one episode. It was either two or three, episode two or three. I can't remember. It's been a while. Um, and uh, it just got real, real dark. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not doing this. And so I turned it off um, and prayed a lot, all right? That was mine, all right? That was, that was something that I did, and uh, a, I thought it was something that, that could end up being okay for me, and it was not okay. Um, that was my situation, I'm sure you've got a situation like that too. Um, if so, I'd be very interested to hear um, what that situation might be and what you did about it. You know, were you able to to get through it and and all that good stuff, um, or what? Look, at the end of the day, we're just trying to live blessed lives here. At the end of the day, we're trying to do what God wants us to do. And it's not to say that we can't have entertainment, we can't have fun, we can't have an imagination. I'm not saying any of those things, but. If it is anti-God or taking you away from God in any way, shape, or form, then you need to remove it, whatever it is. And that's unpopular. I know I'm going to have someone that's going to disagree with me. It's okay. We can disagree as long as you're, you're respectful about it. All right? So, um, all right. I hope this helps, and uh, we'll see you next time.